Hello, I've got a request of all you students out there. I'm giving a talk in March at the APS meeting in a symposium titled Physics Teaching in Gateway Classes, A Global Perspective. The organizers are especially interested in how students learn physics in low resource settings and how to improve. So my talk is titled International Student Experiences in Introductory Physics MOOCs. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna talk about. I actually left the abstract blank, um, so I need your help. So I'm going to open a few threads in the discussion forum and let you talk about what do you get out of MOOCs? Uh, do you use them with a class you're taking? Are you using them for fun? Are you preparing for a future class? And importantly, how have they helped and how have they not helped? What aspects of them are useful? What things would you like to see change? What would you like to be added? I think this will be really useful information and I'll let you decide if you're in a low resource setting. I mean, to me, anyone taking introductory physics could be considered in a low resource setting because it's so hard to learn at first. So please uh, fill in your comments. I might put out a survey later to get more quantitative information as things roll along, but I need all this uh, by March. Um, now to our challenge question. So we had two brave souls answer the flu shot pressure difference across the needle question. Uh, the first was Tara Omar from 101X, and uh, Tara took a solid mechanical molecular approach to the problem, I would say. And my favorite part was when Tara said, just go get this info from a chemist. So with an attitude like that, Tara, I assure you, you're well on your way to being a first-rate physicist. Um, but really, to do the problem, you have to treat the material as a continuum and as a fluid, and you have to use fluid mechanics uh, to really get there easily. Uh, the other person to give it a shot from AB Physics 1 was Ruariri O'Kane. So Ruariri did use fluid mechanics in the Bernoulli equation, uh, but Ruariri calculated the pressure difference from the plunger to the needle which is interesting and, and did it correctly, but I really meant the pressure difference across the needle itself. Now across the needle, if you have it horizontal, there's no gravitational component, and since the area is constant, you would get no pressure difference, but you have to think about viscosity. It was really a viscosity problem. So I ran the numbers and I figured a 25 gauge needle, so the radius of the hole through the needle is very small, about 0.1 millimeter, about a 25 millimeter long needle, a half mil solution being injected in half a second, and a viscosity of the solution a little higher than water. I looked up a typical vaccine viscosity. And I put all that together, and I got 300,000 pascals from the front to the back of the needle, which sounds like a lot. Three, that's basically three atmosphere difference in pressure. But you gotta remember the hole is so small, the force you need is only millinewton. So I think those numbers are about right. The next challenge problem is about Houston. So last week, it was really cold here in Houston. Okay, roads froze, tropical plants died, kids weren't in school, it was mayhem. So the question is very simply stated. The question is simply, when Houston freezes, how much latent heat is released? That's it. You gotta think about what that means. Latent heat, L-A-T-E-N-T, heat. If you don't know what that is, you can be looking it up. I'll see you soon.